It's <laughs> I know the word. All you can do is chef's kiss. It's so good. Because we're eating it. There is no taste of vision. Can you even imagine? So excited. What we were going to do yesterday, we're now doing today. Y'all, look at this. Lean, lean in. Lean, lean all the way in like this. It's kind of hard to lean at this point. So the last time we had pork that we got from a butcher, that other processor oh. did a great job and they actually like sectioned this off, at least in the thirds, but maybe in the... I don't think we knew how good we had it. We it just was... had these perfect sized pork bellies. I highly advise this. If you are raising your own pig, I just cannot get behind bacon. I can't do it. Yeah. I love I love bacon. I love all you bacon eaters. But I don't know that I could ever do that to a pork belly again. Pork belly is so much better. Okay. It's like Goldie's milk. That it's, it's that good. But it's not like... I know, I know. There's nothing... There are different planes in like the existence of the universe. They are both so good. So we went to a processor. All our meat came to us frozen, so now we have to kind of retroactively decide what we're doing with this cut. Because we can't refreeze this. Yeah, you don't want to refreeze your meat. So... What's your plan? We're going to cook one today because I've been salivating thinking about it. Baby wants some pork belly. <laughs> but like if we're going to cut this in thirds because that's just manageable for us. And then I was texting with Meg Holler at the Holler Homestead today and she was like, well, here's what we learned in our last, they just recently did a pig butchering class with Hand Hewn Farm. She gave me a recipe for salt and pepper and how to cure it in the fridge. And basically she said that the ratio of salt to the meat means it could indefinitely sit in your fridge. So we're gonna salt cure the other two portions and keep it in the fridge. And then if we want to smoke it, we can smoke it. But if I wanna just take it out, and put it back in the oven and turn it into another fantastic pork belly than I can. And I won't risk the meat going bad because that would make me cry. Mm -hmm. Pork belly first, salt curing second. second. You just sharpened this knife. Hey. Like butter. The work sharp works. Oh, oh my goodness. The yeah. cross section on this is legit. Oh. Wow. Okay, guys, look at that. I am not mad at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. I feel like a winner. So, while she's cutting this belly up. And the kids are watching I'm, movies. And the kids are watching movies. I'm wondering, so should I be shopping for more piglets now? <laughs> because I'm just kind of the time to get more I know. feeder animals is when you're eating, eating the, last the one. other ones. This is really marbled. This mm -hmm. is going to be delicious. I think the first time we raised pigs, I thought it was like a fluke, but I am liking the flavor of pork and pork chops and pork meat that we've raised even better than like steaks and beef. I'm going to put oil on the one that we're going to cook and I just want to dry it off so that it actually adheres. And then we're going to put salt on the other ones. So we want to dry it off so that it sticks. I don't know. I think I want to do this one today. Because I really want... You want that much? All right, let's do it. I want that much. <laughs> you fool! I'm pregnant. I've been living for this. Lay off me! I'm starving! So this is the one I'm going to cook. I'm going to score it through the fat. I also sharpened those knives a little bit it's too. It's so amazing. This is an online recipe. I will link it in the description below. All we're doing is scoring the fat, get the goods, like the salt and the pepper and the oil into it. To cut through this, you're like, oh, that's satisfying. Talking about the meat sweats. <sighs> this is the opposite of the feeling I had when we cut up the liver. Which was disgusting. Doesn't look so great. It's very satisfying to cook your own meat. So how many pigs would we have to keep in order for you to feel satisfied <laughs> to 
be able to do our own bacon. I never want to do bacon. You're meaning if we had two whole hogs in enough freezer space, you would still keep all the bellies. It's possible that if we had two hogs weighing out, hanging weight at around 300 a piece, that I would consider doing half a hog bacon. You would still want one and a half bellies. I am And then just half a belly bacon. The value, the ease, like it's very easy to prep pork belly. This takes five minutes. The deliciousness of it, and because it's so delicious and decadent, like you don't really need it. Like you can eat three pieces of pork belly. Yeah. And be completely satisfied. And you can make it savory or salty. I'm not here for bacon. I know that's terrible, but I am so here for the pork belly. I know, and while I was back. getting this, I passed a pack of spare ribs and I was like, mm, that's, that's coming up next. <laughs> Being pregnant and having a whole store in your freezer is brilliant. I'm like, I've never done that before and this is a genius move. Yes, to all of, all of the pork in my freezer. So being pregnant, and raising your own meat. Are you crying? I don't know, am I crying? You look I like can't tell anymore, I'm you... so emotional about everything. Okay. okay, are you ready? You're popping it in the oven like that? Yes. That's all you do? Yes. This is all I do, I'm ready to put it in and I wanna be eating in the next like three hours. So, fat side goes up and then the fat like melts and drips through the meat and makes it like pull apart tender. There is no chewy bacon in this, that's the thing. It is this like pot roast tender pork that you're gonna get at the end, but the top is gonna be crispy, crackling, and delicious. It's just too good. So you have a cookie sheet. Yeah, parchment paper to cut the drips. Parchment paper, and then where did you get this little rack from? <laughs> this is from our toaster oven. Okay, so you just find any kind of rack Like to oven get it. safe rack. Yeah, you don't put your cooling rack in your oven, but whatever you use in your oven. It could be a roasting dish, that would be fine. But the first time we cooked it, the bottom was like soaking in the bacon fat and I didn't love that texture. It was just too dense. So when so I lifted it up, so there's like everything, an air gap. Yeah, so everything drips down and the bottom of this is not just sitting in the bacon fat and I've liked that better. Okay, so we just put it in the oven at mm -hmm. what 350. Was it? 350 for our oven for two and a half hours. Then what do you do? Then you bump it up to 425 and you do that for like 25 minutes. It's all in that recipe down below. Meg says this, she says, cut it in smaller pieces to make it easier and 2% of whatever we weigh, we do that in salt and then 5.5%, not 5%. That'd be very peppery, and pepper. So it says, slather it over and vacuum seal them. So then you sit them for two weeks so they can sit in our freezer. <laughs> I texted her back wow. and I said, you just leave them out on the counter for two weeks? And she was like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. So <laughs> she said that part is important. <laughs> important. Because she knows me. <laughs> she knows I'd be like, I left it on the counter. That's like, you didn't tell me to put it in the fridge. She's like, Kelly. 653 grams. 653 grams times 0.02. You need 13 grams okay. of salt. Throw it in. You mix this. Well, right? I think you can just, yeah, it's you all, it's all red. Yeah, it's all measured. But I would like do a little bit. I wouldn't put it all on I the hear Put it in, rub it. Yeah. And then flip it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if that helps. I mean, do you regret me buying this bowl now? Yeah. You uh, had feelings I last week. I think we could go uh, half or even three quarters. But these pieces are fitting this. perfectly on the bottom. I bought this for a lot of things. You, you did but not. But I didn't realize it was you, this. I didn't realize you could fit a person in it. We had a friend say, oh, this is for... Washing, washing babies. Washing the baby in it? Giving the baby a bath? Okay, this is much better. Good job. So you just need big, giant A gigantic 20-quart bowl. Bowl, okay. bowl. Oh. 
does look yummy and peppery. Birds. This is another reason this is not a cooking show. What do people have a better looking fridges mm -hmm. than us? Two weeks. But only two weeks? Well, I think that's the minimum. Okay. So if you like kind of like fermenting food, if you ferment it under, it's not gonna taste good. Bumping it up to crisp it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty crispy already. We could probably do it now, but for how long? I'm gonna give it 20 minutes. We better do it quick. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly didn't wait. She didn't tell me it was ready. Unreal. I can't even do it. I'm just so excited. I told you. What do you want, Ollie? <laughs> baby's happy. Baby's happy. Oh my goodness. Kelly loves to be pregnant. I love it. Mm. Me having a like spiritual connection with my food. It's so good. Be back. It's <laughs> I know the word. All you can do is chef's kiss. It's so good. It's like, especially when you just drizzle just a little tiny bit yeah. of maple syrup. It's like, mm, you are. Because you can't eat it. Because we're eating it. There is no taste of vision. It's, it's that first taste of pork when we did the pork chops and we were like But you can't, these. you can't eat a lot. No. You can eat like four pieces and then you're done. You come back. Yeah. You're not done. You're on a break. Ross and Rachel, your pork belly. And then you come back. Fine by me! Good job, babe. So good.